Hey guys, it's Mike from Baltimore Rides here, and it is 2.30 in the morning, Tuesday morning. I am wrapping up my video for Monday the 21st. Um, kind of an uneventful day, guys. I got started a little bit late because of the, um, the eclipse. I wanted to be home with the kids for the eclipse. Where I was in Northern Maryland, um, I live in Carroll County in Westminster, I was just too far out of the path. We did not even really get any, any significant level of darkness. It just kind of dimmed for a few minutes and that was really about it. We were not in the shadow in any real significant degree. So, you know, DC was apparently the threshold for the shadow. They actually got a little bit dark, um, but we did not. My kids were able to see the eclipse. You know, we, we had the, the right equipment. I had built a box, you know, the pinhole box, and then we had um, a UV goggle that we could look through as well so they could see it, um, you know, the shadow of the moon. But it wasn't enough to really make anything spectacular. The good news is there's another one in 10 years that, uh, you know, is kind of more, um, more directly aimed towards Maryland and, you know, the Northeast. So, Hopefully in 10 years time, we'll all be still be here and we'll get a chance to take a look at it. So with that being said, I didn't even get on the road until 5 p.m. I got no luck with my, uh, my destination mode to this, in the city today. I did get into the city, I set destination, I got a little $4 ride um, and that was it. And then I you know, basically humped my way down to the airport. Traffic at the airport was you know, decent but um, I just got short rides this evening and you know sometimes that's the luck of the draw um, you know unfortunately there wasn't really any plan B available to me this evening because there was an Orioles game but by that point I was all the way down in Edgewater doing a ride there was um, no real you know DC activity there was no surge in DC or Annapolis um, so you know made my way back to the airport and, uh, you know, the traffic was pretty insubstantial at that time. So, you know, I basically just under $100 tonight, guys. That's a disappointing night even for a Monday. Um, you know, 150 is the number for a Monday through Thursday or even really Monday through Wednesday. So, you know, so we're starting the week off in the hole, guys. 50 bucks down from our target. It's not the end of the world. Um, you know, that's the beauty of this industry is that you can bounce back. You can have a great day tomorrow and it'll all fall into place. And that's kind of how it went this evening. You know, Uber specifically, I've noticed this more and more recently is they like to get into a pattern. If you do a trip to Ellicott City, probably your next couple trips are going to be to Ellicott City. It's, it's almost like the, the computer system you know, gets into that, into just a groove of giving you the same thing over and over again. So tonight I made three trips to Columbia because there's a small convention um, taking place out that way. And I was obviously taking, um, you know, out of towners to hotels right there on uh, Macaw or Mall, whatever that street is, um, you know, right off Snowden River Parkway. So you know, that, so three small trips to Columbia. I did have a decent sized trip to, um, to Edgewater. You know, that was actually a really nice trip. Great guy, great conversation. Um, and just under $40 total for that ride, which was basically half my night. Um, you know, and then a couple little small trips here and there in between, but you know, just, a, just a modest night to say the least. And, you know, had there been a concert something more significant than a you know than an Orioles game in the rain I, there would have pro there wasn't really any boost tonight um, outside of the the baseball game you know I might have had a better evening but it's also just down to luck guys you know if I'd gotten two good rides instead of two short rides that could have changed my whole evening so you know some of it you can control some of it you can't I didn't even really have any rides pull me in the right direction so, you know, if I'd been pulled down towards DC or Annapolis um, earlier in the evening, then I could have just set up camp and stayed down there. But, uh, you know, tomorrow is the day I'm supposed to go to the Uber office. I'm actually going to the DC office for this next chapter of the 180 Days of Change. 
And, you know, that's going to be an interesting, you know, meeting because I want to sit down one-on-one. I want to have my account flipped to a DC account. I feel their promotions are better. um, And I feel like I can make better money down there. So, you know, it's worth it to me, even though I live all the way out in Westminster, to commit to an area that's more profitable versus an area that's less profitable. And for those drivers that just like Northern Maryland and they like Baltimore and DC, or Baltimore and BWI, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if that's how you want to make your money, that's your choice. My choice is to, you know, maximize my potential. And if promotional, um, you know, incentives are the way to, to, you know, squeeze an extra hundred bucks, 200 bucks a week out of, uh, out of doing the job I'm already doing, then I'd be crazy not to. You know, the boost situation with Baltimore has not changed. It's been static since I started doing this. It's always morning rush hour, afternoon rush hour, and then Friday, Saturday night bar scene. Well, now that I don't really drive the bar scene too much, um, and I never have done morning rush hour, and I rarely ever do that much in terms of Baltimore's afternoon rush hour, I'm basically getting a promotional incentive that I cannot benefit from um, because I'm not going to drive those hours. And this is a business where you choose your hours. So I'm not being forced to. They're nudging me. They want me to drive more during rush hour. But I'll be honest, guys, it's not for me. So, you know, the DC incentives are not necessarily geared around rush hour. They're much more broad. They're much more wide ranging because the city itself is given a much bigger geo map, Um, you know, all the way out into some Maryland communities, some Virginia communities. It's a much bigger range than just the Hamden, Fells Point, Canton, and financial district map. And so that's beneficial to me because now the trip lengths are going to be bigger just inherently. So we will see. I will definitely update you guys tomorrow on that. I also have video from last night that I have not uploaded yet. I tried to edit it, but I had um, uh, I'd made a little goof, so I need to do some some figuring out there. So I will get some of that stuff posted tonight before I go to bed. I'll get this video up and running, and then uh, I will touch base with you guys tomorrow and let you know how the meeting went. So everybody have a great night. Thank you guys for following me. I appreciate the subscribers. Um, I haven't said thank you enough, and I know I need to say it more. So if you're out there, you're watching my videos, um, you are or aren't subscribed, you know, to whatever the case may be, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it. Um, A conversation, actually, this is worth talking about. Conversation came up just the other day. We were sitting at the airport um, holding lot, chatting, and uh, this young fellow, I did not get his name, was... Um, was kind of sitting there with us and, and, you know, the little tent setup we have there is very much impromptu. It's not anything official. It's just two little 10 by 10 canopies and some lawn chairs. It's a place to sit and get some shade and just commiserate and talk. Well, this young guy came up and he was not really a regular in our airport parking lot, but uh, he was chatting with us and, you know, we were asking him how he was doing and he said, yo, I've got, I've got a couple good little spots I like. And I said, oh, okay, what's working for you? And he said, oh, I'm not going to tell you. I don't want to give away my spot. And a couple of us were sitting around there and we all kind of like raised our eyes like, oh, okay, well, that's weird. And, I, you know, I said to him, I was being nice. I was being very civil. I said, you know, that's, I respect that. Um, I, I do understand where you're coming from. Um, But, you know, that's not the right approach. The right approach is, you know, we share and share alike. We all want to help each other get better. There's enough passengers and enough customers out there for all of us. So, you know, it isn't like we're taking food from each other's mouths. Um, We're just trying to help each other out and tell each other, hey, don't go here or go here. This is good. This is bad. We're giving each other tips. We're not... um, no one's out to steal money out of anybody else's pocket. Um, and, and I don't think he understood that, I'll be honest. But, you know, you guys have heard me say it time and time again. That's what these videos are about. They're not about me making money. They're about me helping other drivers or potential drivers um, getting ready to sign up to, uh, 
you know, to make their lives easier, to make their adjustment easier. You know, I didn't really have any formal training on how to be a rideshare driver. I downloaded the app, I did all my stuff, I got turned on, and you know what I did? I just turned on the app. And I went to that first customer's house, I picked him up, I clicked the button that said, where you go, and I drove there. And you know, I learned by myself. Sad to say, I, I learned by myself. I didn't have a mentor, I didn't have a referral code. Um, you know, no one had said, oh, you should sign up and do this. This was something I just came upon by myself. And, you know, that's maybe, you know, why I, I think this is so important. You know, for those of you guys that are out there driving that maybe feel some of my, my frustrations or can appreciate and connect with some of the things that I've been frustrated with, that's what this is all about. It's about helping other people, um, you know, butterfly wings, that whole butterfly effect. You know, if I help somebody else down the road, it helps more people and so and so. And, you know, it all ripples out. It's karma, guys. You know, you do something good and it's just going to trickle down and it'll eventually come back to you. So, you know, that's what this is about. I want to say thank you. I don't say it enough. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for sticking with me, the ones that do watch the videos regularly. Um, if you've subscribed, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for that. And, uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed, it doesn't cost anything. There's no money involved. It's just uh, uh, basically turns you on so that you're, you get a notification on the YouTube app whenever I upload something. So that's all. It's like a friendly reminder from YouTube that, hey, Mike uploaded a new video. Um, that's all. So I would appreciate it if you can subscribe. If you don't want to, I understand. Um, you know, still watch the videos. And uh, if you guys are out and about, you know, send me a text, send me a PM, you know, something to let me know that you, uh, you're out there. I'd be happy to meet some of you guys in person. I'd be delighted to, you know, because that's really what it's all about is us connecting and networking and sharing ideas and, you know, just being, uh, you know, creating a community of drivers that I think, um, I think is necessary for us all to be successful. So I'm rambling. I know that. I'm sorry. Um, but I'm going to shut this one down. I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to get some sleep. You guys, uh, if you're out there on the road, I wish you luck. And if not, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.